تقطير هو نعطو عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرير أنفسه وصيات أهله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ودم لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد مدك ورسول الله حمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك على أبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلي عليه سبحانه أجمعين وسبحانه أجمعين I seek refuge in Allah from the rejected enemy. Shaitan. With Allah's name, the most merciful benefactor, the most merciful redeemer. All praise is due to Allah alone. We praise him and we seek help from him. We ask forgiveness of him. We repent to him. And we seek refuge in him from our own weaknesses, our own um, shortcomings, our own bad deeds. I bear witness there is no deity except Allah alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad and he has no associates, no partners. And I bear witness Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. O oh Allah, may your peace and your blessings be upon your servant, your messenger, Muhammad, and upon his family, his, his descendants. And the Sabi, those who is, 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 is with him, who's there in the front lines, giving the all that his mission is a success. Today we're going to look at a great deal of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what he's done because it's so, so valuable. Allah in the Surah the Nisad starts out when he says, Hey, you have he said, talking about mankind. And we looked at that uh, on occasion. But today, <coughs> we don't want to just look at the part where the law says, reverence the womb that bore you to Abraham um, as, a, as the literal understanding that most people have in terms of talking about the womb of the mother. That's, that's that's a very literal understanding, and it doesn't carry the full impact of what Allah wants us to understand in terms of this Quran. Araham is that which something is formed and shaped and treats it with such delicacy and such deliberate uh, input that everything that's needed, that when that is delivered, it's going to have it. Araham. In fact, the, the word Rahman, Rahim, merciful, comes from that word Araham. And the broader picture of the word is not even that particular process, but it signifies humanity, humanity and community. Community more, because humanity is broad. Community speaks of likenesses. Community speaks of commonality of the, the, the ones that's part of that community. You could say community of man, and that's like all of mankind. But generally speaking, when you use the word community, in the Arabia, we talk about Uma. And that word sort of comes back to that Araham again. Uma, Umi, comes back to that producer, that, that one that produces something for the future. There are many aspects about the Quran <coughs> that you're going to see. The more you read, and the more understanding you get. If you read Quran, 
and you feel as though you're not getting anything from it and you're doing it out of regiment, you're doing it out of habit, or you're doing it because you think that's what you're supposed to do. If that is happening, then you may want to begin to look at a better approach to reading the Quran. Maybe approach the Quran with more of a challenge. You challenge the Quran, as Allah says in the Quran, challenge this. Allah says it, challenge it. If you think that this is not what it is, then challenge it. Bring one like it. That's not wasn't just talking to people of 1400 years ago. That's talking to everyone, everyone. Okay, look, when you say, uh, well, I read the Quran every day, but I, I don't, I, I just read it. No, if you're not challenging the Quran, then how are you going to get the response from the Quran that is designed to give you? The Quran is designed to give you a particular response. And I just don't mean Muslim. I mean every human being on the planet Earth that was and is and will be. This Quran is designed to do that. Challenge. Okay, let's look at this. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was upset with the conditions of the society in which he lived. He was very upset. He didn't think he could do anything about it, but he prayed on it. In whatever manner he prayed. He meditated. He went off to his self. Now, when you read that story, and you read the part that Jibreel came to Muhammad, and then he squeezed Muhammad three times and asking him to repeat, Ikra bismi rabbika, asking him to repeat five ayats in the Quran. And then finally, after three times, Muhammad wasalam, was able to do it. Is that all you get from that? Is that all you get from that? It's more to it. It's more to it. Prophet Muhammad was searching. Prophet Muhammad was searching. He didn't, he didn't, the Quran just didn't fall on him because he was, looked like one walking in the street who make it, hold it or do it. No, he was searching. He was looking for an avenue. He was looking for a tool to help him with this terrible thing that was on his mind, on his heart. What can I do about this society? What can I do about my people? What can I do about people who come into our land and they're robbed, attacked? What can I do to help that cause? He was searching. He was seeking help. He was seeking some way, some concept, some idea that could solve his problem. That could solve his problem. And because of his sincerity, not just seeking for a way to solve his problem, but his sincerity in his relationship with people. You see, you, could, you can count on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was the kind of man that everybody in his society say, if you want to know who you can trust, trust Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or trust Muhammad. One time, they were debating about when the black stone fell out the Kaaba, they were debating about how they were going, who was going to put it in. And so they said, let's, let's, the first man who come through that gate in the morning, let's see what he has to say about that. Let him. And it was Prophet Muhammad, so that's fine. And so they asked him, well, what, what, what can we do? So he told them each to get hold of a cloth and get, grab part of the cloth and he put the stone on the cloth, and everybody lifted the cloth at the same time, and he guided it in. Is that all you get from that story? He guided it in. He didn't just pick it up and put it in. He wasn't that kind of leader. 
You see, that was a sign of leadership, the kind of leadership that the world needs. The world don't need the kind of leadership to stand before people telling them what to do. That's not the kind of leadership Allah is talking about. Allah is talking about the kind of leadership that can stand in the background and help everybody else to the front. That's the kind of leadership. Not that's what we see today, all these charismatic things that are going on in the world trying to get people to follow them. That's not what Allah was raising. Allah was raising the kind of leader that could step back and let you come in front and let you grow and let your heart take the forefront. This is what the Prophet Muhammad was symbolizing. That kind of leader. So, they all did as Muhammad asked them to do. So we learn a lot from the stories, the hadiths of Muhammad. We learn a great deal. And why should we learn anything from that? Why, why do we learn anything? What is that telling us? What, what should we learn? How should we utilize that? You read the stories of, of Prophet Muhammad and his, in his battles. You read the story of Prophet Muhammad and his return to Mecca. You read the stories in, of Prophet Muhammad, how he related to other people. What do you get for that that you can apply to your life? Your life every day. Does it mean that you cut off your pants? Does it mean that you color your beard with henna or your hair? Does it mean that you wear a jalabi or a kufi or what? Does it mean that? Allah mentioned none of that in Quran. What he mentioned in Quran is uswa about the prophet. He says his character. If you want to come nearer to Allah, look at the uswa of Muhammad. Then he also talked about the uswa of Ibrahim and the followers of Ibrahim, the uswa. Not what they were wearing, but their conduct. Let's look at the picture for a minute. Let's look at the picture in terms of you and me. Let's look at the picture in terms of us. What if we were Muhammad? What would you be looking at in the society today? What would you be looking for a tool to help you to change what you see in the society? You know we have a lot of help in that Allah had already revealed the Quran to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, which means that we can use that as part of what we need to help us make some changes. Allah talks in the Quran about an argument. He talks in the Quran about an argument between philosophies and reality as which he is presenting. The argument goes something like this in Surah to Baqarah. And they say, none shall enter paradise unless he be a Jew or a Christian. Those are the, their desires. Then Allah says, say, talking to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Produce your proof. Produce your proof that only Christians and Jews are going to enter the paradise. Now, if that was said today and it was Muhammad who they were talking to, do you think that uh, the Muslims would be added to that? Do you think they would be saying something like this? 
None shall enter paradise unless he be a Jew, Christian, or Muslim. Do you believe there are Muslims who believe that? That just by being Muslim they're going to enter paradise? Conclusion to the argument. Nay, whosoever submits his whole self to Allah and and is and now why is in between that and is a doer of good. He don't say anything about a Christian. He don't say anything about a Muslim. Doesn't say anything about a, a Jew. It says a doer of good. Now, doesn't that qualify anyone who wants to make it to the paradise? Do your blood have to run that of the Jewish or your faith that of the Christian or the faith of that whoever say they're Muslim? Because you know there are so many sets of Muslims now who you've got all kinds of Muslims. Which one is right? Allah says here who is right. He says the doer of good. Who submits his whole self to him is a doer of good. He shall get his reward with his Lord. On such shall there be no fear, nor shall they grieve. That's that argument that Allah presents in the Quran. He allows that argument to be known to us so we can see, so we can understand what this is about today. So we can understand our purpose. What is your purpose? Do you feel as though you have a purpose? Do you think you're just going to get up in the morning, make salat, go to work, come home, make salat, and go to bed? Is that it? Watch a couple football games? Is that what you think is your duty? Allah has filled us with potential. So much potential that he told the Malaikati, he says, this is my Khalifa. Just by using that word alone should hit to you what you are capable of, what, you, what Allah is charging you with, all of us. A Khalifa has the power to change the world. A Khalifa has the power to replenish the world. He has the power to do everything his mind and heart can engage by his looking and finding things in the creation. Khalifa is an impacting word. And it's not something we should just take, take uh, uh, lightly. You know, I know there's such a lot of times they say, well, the Khalifa is the one who will come lead us. That's because they, they're thinking of that weak, weak thinking of what leadership is. They're looking for somebody to walk down out of the sky or off the mountain or off the ocean to come lead the society. There is no leader like that. Prophet Muhammad was an example of leadership. And what did he do? He stayed in the back and helped guide the people. You won't even see the true leadership. You know why? Because the leadership is within you. The Khalifa is all humanity. And when all humanity begin to see that they are the Khalifa, they can work together and not sit around waiting for someone else to come and lead them. Do you know that everyone who is sitting around waiting for a great leader or somebody to come and lead them, they're going to get somebody. And he's going to be the one to stand between their pocket and the Sadaka box or their pocket and the charity box or their pocket and wherever they give their money because that's what he's going to do. He sees he has a good thing here. He sees he has a good thing because the people are hung out on emotion. People are hung out on feeling good. People are hung out and you make them feel good, they'll give you their money. Then he says, some of this money is for God and some of this money is for me. And they drive around in the Cadillacs and big build big farms and things of that nature because the people are waiting for weak leadership. That kind of leadership can't lead you anywhere. The only leadership that can lead you is that's what's in you. 
that Allah put in you. That's the only leader that can lead you anywhere. And that's the only leader Allah is going to judge. Allah created in all of us that capacity for leadership to govern our own selves. Self-government. See, those who stand between you in the Sadaka box <laughs> don't like that kind of talk. They don't like that kind of talk. Man, let me tell the people that we can, they, they, they should uh, just uh, try to lead themselves. No, they don't want that. They don't want the people to come together through mutual consultation and come up with ideas and concepts on how we can better ourselves. They want to tell the people that. We'll tell you, you stand over there, John, you stand over there, Hassan, you stand over there, so I'll tell you how to work this thing. See, they don't want you to come together, sit down and put your mind, see, because they may not be in that, that loop, because they may not have that kind of input. And they shouldn't be if they don't have that kind of input. Like minds should get together. Like minds should get together. There's no leader I know anywhere on this planet Earth that has enough anything to be in every solution. He's a liar and a fraud. He doesn't know enough to be in every solution, to be the leader of every solution. The solution comes from the people. Do you know that's why America works so well? Although we have our problems with leadership and all that kind of thing happens. But the reason America works so well is because of this concept of democracy. That I believe, and so do others, believe she, she got from Quran. I believe this concept of democracy, mutual consultation, that America has now, this freedom, I believe came from the Quran. I read the history of those who formed the, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States, all of them, professed to, to read Quran. Many of them had Quran. Many of them wouldn't, and, and there are groups right now called the Masonics, the Masons. The Quran is their supreme book. But they're really not responsible for the change in the world. They're not responsible for the change in the world. The ones that are responsible for the change in the world are us, the Muslims, the Ummah, the balanced Ummah that Allah brought through this Quran and used Prophet Muhammad as the example of that change. We're responsible. Now, I know some of us might say, no, I'm not responsible for this. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. You see, when you say la illaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, you're saying, I don't believe there's no God, no deity, no nothing, no control, no anything other than Allah. The moment we say that, there's nobody standing between you and Allah. Now all of your instructions, all of your directions, come from Allah. Not from somebody through, uh, through somebody from Allah, no, from Allah to you. How do you make that work? All right, brother, I believe that. I, I believe it now. Well, how does, how, does, how does this thing work? Okay. We all, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, we all believe that. We all are equal to that. We all make salat. We all pay zakat. We all are on that level. Is there anything else? This is what we have to look at. Is there anything else? Look at your example. Look at your example. Your example is who? 
Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he looked at his society, did he just say, let me go to sleep? There were people in his society making a lot of money. And he could have been making a lot of money and doing a lot of different things. Did he just go to sleep? No. He looked around and saw the problems. He looked around and saw the problems. The ones he could help, he did. The ones he couldn't, he prayed on. Once he couldn't, he prayed to Allah he could. And then Allah gave him this tool, this Quran, this mechanism by which it was revealed in a pattern, in a pattern by which he could unlock all the social conditions around him and leave as an example for thousands and thousands of generations to come. So there's one thing we know about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, other than he was a righteous man, all right. But another, one thing we, need, we know about him, he was one who was seeking guidance. Seeking guidance to do what? Seeking guidance to make a change in the world. He was seeking guidance to make a change in the world. Not in himself. He wasn't seeking guidance for that. He wasn't praying to Allah, make me a better person. That wasn't what he was praying about. He was praying about is there something that could be done about the conditions of the people in this society? What is it that can be done? I would love to know what it is. If I can do something about it, I will. Give me just one little glimpse of information and science. I'll do something to help make the change. And then once Allah gave it to him and he was committed to it, he would not stop at anything. He would not stop for anyone. Except making these changes. He used the Quran as a way to help the people of his time treat one another as brothers. There were tribes fighting each other, killing each other. And every time Allah revealed the ayat to him, that would sort of stem that, he would give it to them. He would teach them that ayah. He would say, this is the ayah. This is what you should be doing as brothers. Then a large in the court, I said, I brought you together in, the, in this cause, in Islam, hold to it as a rope. You see how he used the Quran to heal the wounds of his time? That's who you're following. That is the leader you look, you have, you need, you want, and the only one you can get to solve the problems we have. Now, does that mean that the Christian and the Jew have to say, are we following Muhammad too? No, it doesn't mean that. It means exactly what Allah says in the Quran when he was saying that nay, whosoever submits his whole self to Allah and is a doer of good. The key is a doer of good. A doer of good. Are, are, are you a doer of good? Am I a doer of good? Did you help an old lady cross the street yesterday or did you Help her catch a cat that was running loose? Or what kind of good deed? Little person was trying to cross the street. Did you stop your busy schedule and help them across the street? What kind of do of good? You break up a couple of little people doing a little something they shouldn't be doing. You show them a little better way. What, what goods? What kind of do of good? You can go through your daily routine and see places where you will do a good or not a dual good, because all of us are presented with certain opportunities. I was presented with one just a few minutes ago, out, out in the street. It was trying to park our cars. One lady got out, another lady was saving the car for another space, boom, we got into a thing. Was I do a good? No, I don't think so. I think as I walked away from that situation, got the parking space and everything and came on in, I said, you know what? I should try to find those sisters and apologize to them. 
Not that they were right, but that we shouldn't have pursued in, in no kind of debate like that. You see, there was a discussion going on in the, in the, in the masjid between two people. One was a believer, one, one was just a person listening and talking to the believer. And then the believer was just listening. Then the believer started to retaliate. Prophet Muhammad was present. When the believer started to retaliate, the prophet got up and left. Then later on he asked, he said, why, you, why did you leave when, when I started to retaliate? He said, because that's the moment the shaitan entered. You see, a doer of good don't let shaitan in. Sometimes just being silent is a good deed. Sometimes just saying I'm sorry is a good deed. A kind word sometimes is a good deed. Those are the little things we're talking about. That's not exactly what I am talking about now. What I am talking about is what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was talking about and what he did in terms of doing something that changed his society that in reality changed the world. Is that too much to bite off now? Now would you, if, if, if that was said to you just like that, and uh, after you had said, La illaha illallah, then you would say that, look, now you got to make a, you got to be one of the instruments to help change the world, to become a new world like Prophet Muhammad did the old world. Would you didn't say, okay, a minute? Or would you say, oh wait, I, I, wasn't, I, didn't, I wasn't into all of that. I would just want to come and pray. What position would you take? You know, most of us who have been committed for a long time in Dean Alice and I, we almost walk and talk it all the time. We just, we just get up and sleep and go, get up and work and go to sleep. The religion, because that's us. We don't see two ways or three ways. It's just us. Most of us have been doing this for quite a while. But that's the us I'm talking about today. I'm talking about those of us. What are we really committed to? So with that, we want to take a short pause. <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbi alameen. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an Muhammad bin Abdul Rasul. You know, the other day I was watching the news. Well, listening to news on radio, in fact. And they were talking about a 16-year-old girl who was beaten to death Two, two or three days ago. And then later on, another girl was beaten to death or killed around the same time. And then they was talking about someone else got killed and beaten and shot. Now I know you heard in the same news that I hear because they won't let you, they won't let you go to sleep without hearing it. You just have to turn to some real stations that don't even want to even, even think about that stuff. And even they say it now and then. But let me just say this. We living in a world where 16 year old girls are killed. We living in a world where people can be jogging through the park and are raped and murdered. We live in a world where someone will come into a grocery store and shoot down the owner. We live in a world where a brother Muslim can come out of a, 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 a Muslim event, like you or me, coming out of a Muslim event, leaving out of a, 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 a janazah, leaving out of, out, of, out of Juma, leaving out of some event, and coming out into the street, see a little commotion going on and try to be a peacemaker and get shot to death. We live in that kind of world. We live in, in that kind of world. We can put on the blindness. So I, 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 that don't bother me because I'm over here. 
Don't you believe that? It bothers you. Maybe not emotionally, but eventually it'll go get around to you. Eventually it gets around to everybody because when, when an apple starts to rot, it rots all the way through. It doesn't start to rot and say, oh, hey, well, we're going to just rot on this side of the apple. No, it rots all the apple up. And that's the way societies are up. Societies do. They crumble because of their decadence. And many of us have felt the pain and the sorrow of this society because we ourselves have lost children and we are Muslim. And there are Christians who go to church every Sunday and, 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 and every week and give all they can to try to do what they think are right are losing their children and Jews. Very important. Very important. This is why in a cookbook, you're really supposed to concentrate on your community. Not the Ummah in, but the community you in. And try to see what you can do to make it a better world. When the call to prayer is made, it's a call to improve conditions. It's a call to cultivate the society. It's a call to make things better. It's not to come and just put our heads on the masala. You can do that at home or in the park. No, why would Allah call us here together? He says, come together on this day. If you don't ever do it any other time during the week, come on this day. He is making sure, letting us know, sending us a strong message. That we need to come together and start working on doing something to correct the society. Don't you know what righteousness means? Righteousness means doing the correct thing according to the pattern in which Allah has designed this creation. Now there's some statistics out. The show, Trace right down. You take the little boy who shot the brother the Muslim brother, in the chest. You take those young brothers who beat these young teenagers, and you take these others, you take this older guy who shot the person in the store. You take some of these police officers who don't know how to treat human beings like human beings. You take some of those things and you trace them all back. And, the, and, the, and one of the greatest common denominators in this day and time deals with 8th to 10th grade students. 8th to 10th grade students. And what happens in between the 8th and 10th grade and especially in the African American community, that is where the highest dropout rate begins to occur in school. That is where the young people begin to not concentrate on their math skills, so they fall behind. They don't concentrate on their English skills, so they fall behind. Now maybe your child is great in math or in English, but it's your child who's going to have to grow up. They might have to deal with this child who is not. Down the line, with this child down the line, got a gun in his hand. And your child just getting out of a brand new Mercedes Benz, getting ready to go into his office. And this young guy said, give me your money. Bam! Just like that. That's why the world has to change. You can't change the world by hoping it better. You have to look at where the problem starts and get in there. And begin to shift things around to the point where when it comes out, it won't be like that. We're in the Arahim. We're in the womb, we're in the womb, the Abraham, and we got to change it in the womb. We can't wait till it come out of the womb as a teenager with a gun in his hand to try to change it. If we have to deal with him that way, we deal with him that way. And you see, this society don't waste hardly no time with that. But the way we change it is in the Abraham, in the womb. That's where it starts. Now, Certainly, 
This is a big job for the education system. But the education system has so many problems, it can barely straighten itself out. I taught for a while in Newark, Westside High, and my background is uh, sociology. And I tell you that the system is so twisted, it is goals and objectives work against one another. The public school systems are supported by the money they get from the federal government and passed down to the states. And they only get that money if the students are failing. They only get that money if there are so many students that are not doing well. If there are so many special ed cases. And you notice how they wear word special ed. Special ed doesn't mean the brightest and the best. It means those who are falling behind, those who are weak, in the mind of the people. But on the paper, special ed is a group of students on one end are great achievers, that's special ed. On the other end are lesser achievers, that's special ed. But they only give and talk to you about the ones on the other end because that's the one that brings the money into the school system. And the school system is looking to make money. Now. That's a dilemma. We can't go twist the school system's arm. The parents have to do that. Now, we can't convince parents like you to start doing something in the school system to start changing those things and regulations. You have to read some of these regulations. You have to get into it. You have to get involved. You have to get down in it like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't think he wasn't down in it. He was down in the mud trying to make the change. You have to do it too. That's why I, my hat's off to him. Brother, brother Darnell. He, he's not gonna like me to tell, tell what he's doing because he's, he's a shy brother, brother to himself. He's opening up his house for people in his community, young kids who are weak in mathematics. See, he loves mathematics. He went to Penn, Penn University, you know, one of the Ivy League schools over, over in Pennsylvania somewhere. See, but he's given up himself. So I started to follow his lead. I said, whoa, let me get my stuff together. So my, my background lends it to history. I teach history. I teach the, the special part of history that talks about the golden era of the African American people. There are a lot of things we don't know about ourselves. And there's a lot of reasons that other people have negative opinions about us because they don't know those things. So I'm making a move to do what Donnell is doing. Now we, we, we invite all of you, some of you, if you just have a, a parenting skill, can walk a kid across the street, talk to a young, young brother, eight years, uh, eight, eighth grade, ninth grade. We are asking, give of yourself. Let's change the society. It's not gonna change without us. And it's just gonna get worse. And, and, only change would be worse, and if it gets us worse, we might be standing in front of that 45 and can't get out of the way of a bullet. Now, I don't know, there's no Superman and all those kind of characters, but 45 heading at you, if you haven't done the work in advance, for that 45 not to be in that youngster's hand, you have a hard time ducking that bullet. You may do it, but you have a hard time. What we are saying, and what we encourage all of us to do, let's follow our leader, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would be in the thick of this fight. He would be trying to make changes with these young people. He would be working with them because he knows that they're going to grow up to be older. He knows that that's where the future is. And if you can correct them now, you won't have a problem with them later. And that's another reason some of us, we had a board meeting last night, we discussed about building the African American Cultural Center to help stem this problem. Those of you who can join that effort and give funds to that effort, it's going to be a great effort. 
Don't take away from your giving Sadaka here. But that's going to be a great effort. We believe, we're not, we would love to change the world, but we believe we can have an impact on Elizabeth. We believe that. We can have an impact on Elizabeth and just save one or two children. Don't you know that's the great miracle? A great miracle if we can curb one or two children away from going down that leg of destruction. Guide us along the right way, the way of the path of those who has bestowed thy favors, not those whose wrath is brought down. Why should we want to see the young kids go down that route? We don't want to go down it. So we should do whatever we can to keep them from going down it. I know this don't sound like what we're supposed to be doing as Muslims to some of you, but this to me it sounds like all we're supposed to be doing as Muslims, nearly. There are other things too, but this is a big thing. Giving our time, giving our money, giving our efforts to the cause of change. So we thank Almighty Allah for blessing us being here at this day on Yom Juma. And we ask Allah to bless those who are unable to make it to Juma. And we ask Allah to give us the best of this world and of the hereafter and protect us from the fire. I mean, He comes to us. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hayya la salah, hayya la falah, qaqam ta salah, qaqam ta salah. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah.